Welcome back to Open Line. Talking politics. Tomorrow is election day. We have with us Pat Nolan. Uh, he is our political political anal analyst, and he will be here tomorrow night for our election special. Um, and it's always always fun to talk about politics, and and there, there's some very interesting races, and it's been good to hear from the callers tonight about their perspectives. Let's go. It looks like Linda left us. Linda, if you want to call back, go ahead, call back. Let's go to Jay. Hello, Jay. Hey, how you doing? Go right ahead. Hey. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if they, uh, which one of the politicians was supporting medical marijuana. Uh, that's an important issue. And also, uh, I was also wondering if this this time when you go through elections, I've heard that they're not going to hand out the little stickers that say I voted no more, that uh, that was considered racist. Well, I, I know they're going to hand out those stickers. That's, that's a mainstay. Marijuana has not been, certainly not a big issue in the Republican primary. Um, I haven't heard that. Just, I haven't heard that discussed. That Pat. issue tends to be more of an issue in the state legislative races. I don't know what legislative district you're in, but uh, you could probably look up the candidates that you're interested in if you're in one of those districts and see what they're, because that's a bill that comes up frequently in the legislature in Tennessee sort of slowly inches towards having a medical marijuana program. Almost all the other states do at this point, but Tennessee still sees it as a, uh, as somehow getting people hooked into the mainstream drug situation. That's not the way it's worked in most states. We're not talking about legalizing marijuana. We're talking about using it for medical purposes. But so far, the Republicans have not decided that's a good idea, so it hasn't gotten anywhere. But if you want to find out what the candidates are, you'll probably find more about that on the uh, on the state legislative scene. The, the congressional, that's not a big, big, been a big federal congressional thing because primarily the feds have not gotten into medical marijuana and they don't even want to get into into legal marijuana at this point. And when you're talking about the state legislature, you're talking about Mike Stewart, he's, Mike he's Stewart. up. Darren Jernigan, Darren another Jernigan. state lawmaker. Yeah, those are the up. two members of our delegation, two Democrats that are being opposed. Uh, Mike Stewart's got uh, 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 James Turner, who's uh, a minister, who's been the head of the Interdenominational Ministers Fellowship. Uh, running against him. Uh, also a good bit of Mike's district, even though Mike himself is from East Nashville, goes down into the Antioch area. So that's one people are watching to see with if there is a large African-American turnout, perhaps because of the 5th District race for Congress, is that going to have any impact on that? Darren Jernigan's got uh, somebody running against him who has been uh, pretty outspoken in some of the advertising he's having on the uh, on Facebook that I've seen, uh, most people would think he would be the favorite to win, but uh, it's a race I'll be looking at tomorrow. And I think the guy running against him is a Grant Thomas Madario, so I, I may have mispronounced his name, but uh, he, yeah, he, lives, he lives out in the Donaldson area. He was born in Hawaii. I'm sitting here looking. He's been he moved to Clarksville, but obviously now lives in the in the district. He is a 2006 graduate of Boston P. Okay, interesting. Let's go to Benji on line two. Hello, Benji. Yeah, I got a question for Pat there. I'm just curious if he's uh, heard much about a tiff between the re true Republicans and the rumpers in this state, and just would like for him to comment on that, please. Thank you. Between the Republicans and who? I didn't, I didn't catch you with the other part of it. Okay. True Republicans right. and um, I guess Republicans who aren't true Republicans. I wasn't sure exactly what he said, but it, is that what this Senate race comes? Are, are there people well, saying we're true Republicans and we're not true Republicans? Well, in, in most cases for this for the Senate race, you would substitute the word Trump, not not necessarily Republican, although. You do see that from Flynn ads. He, he wants to talk about taking Tennessee values to Washington. But uh, no, it, in the, a lot of, you saw this to some degree in the 2018 race in governor. Everybody, in that case, they were all running to sort of be as close to Donald Trump as they could get. And you've had it even more in this Senate race. They, you know, and you know, there's been a lot of people who've always thought that you are a Republican in name only, what they call a rhino. Maybe that's what he was talking about. And one of the reasons I think that Lamar Alexander has not gotten into this race is he probably, I mean, Bill Haggerty worked for him. Bill Haggerty was his economic development commissioner. So he's probably supporting him, but remember, Lamar is considered, as some people I think we had a call earlier as Republican who said, I won't mind seeing Lamar Alexander lead. He, they people, some people perceive him because I guess of his moderate roots to be a, to be a rhino. Uh, so that that's one. And the other person who I think has probably been supporting Haggerty has been Bill Haslam. Right, right. But Bill Haslam in the Republican Party, even though he's very popular statewide, if, if in, a, in a general election he'd be a formal candidate against anybody. 
But in a Republican primary, maybe not as much. Remember four years ago when Donald Trump was running, when the, when the videos came out, they were not very flattering about the things the president said about women. At that point, was one, about one of the times when the debates was coming out, Bill Haslam said that maybe Donald Trump ought to get off the national ticket and let Mike Pence be the presidential candidate. Well, he still had a problem with that with some Republicans, not all Republicans by any means, but that's still a problem for him. And so when you're talking about who is, who is the, the most Trumpian, you don't want to have, you don't want to bring Bill Haslam out necessarily to be real close. Behind the scenes helping where he can help. Absolutely. But that's kind of the, the fight going on. And, and that fight may get even more intense in Tennessee if Donald Trump is no longer president and there's a sort of a, a void in that part of it. So what, what do they do with it? They don't, di they, don't, they don't disagree on what they ought to do on the issues for most cases, but who are they for? What are they going to mm -hmm. do? What kind of Republican do they want to be? And then they start finding fault with each other. And that's what the Senate race has been. Well, this person took money about this thing and this person gave money to Al Gore, this person gave money to, to, to whoever else it was, Romney and everything else. Right, right. I mean, you can see this, the, the fault lines inside the party from the, from the attacks that have been going on in the, in the primary. All right, we're going to take a break. We will come back, wrap everything up. Be back right after this.